welcome to Expecting Women's Ministry. I am your host, Minister B.J. Franklin. Thank you so much for joining me on today. Hey, why don't you go and get on the phone, call a neighbor, call a friend, call a relative, and tell them that Minister B.J. Franklin is on getting ready to minister the word of God on prayer. Yes, I am. Go get you a pad. Go get you a pen so you can take down notes, so you can take down down scripture and go back and study for yourself. That's right. And so that you can take down the announcements as well. Because hey, why don't you join me on Thursday evenings? That's right. Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. on my Expecting Women's Phone Conference. I am there ministering the Word of God. All you have to do is call in. The number is on the screen. Call in and mute your phone just in case you have some background noise so we won't be a distraction to anyone. That's right. Be sure and share the information with your families and friends as well. This is another tool that God has given us as believers so that we can continue to stay in the word of God because we have to continue to immerse ourselves in the word of God on a daily basis. And this is another tool that God has given me. That's right. And I want you to join me on that phone conference. Hey, look here. If you have an event coming up, if you have have a workshop, a women's workshop, or a women's conference coming up, or a women's prayer breakfast or luncheon. Hey, shoot me an email. Give me a phone call. Invite me, and I will come. That's right. If you want me to speak at your event, I will come. Shoot me that email or give me a phone call as well. Also, don't forget, I, I, I love to implement, or excuse me, if you have a health fair as well, be sure and invite me. Hey, I want to talk about wellness because as you know, if you have been uh, watching me and listening to me for any length of time, I always have to talk about wellness because wellness is very important for us. That's right. We have to continue to take care of the temple. Our body is the temple of God. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's right. And we want to continue to keep it strong and keep it well and keep moving so that we can do the things that God has called us to do. That's right. Are you doing your exercise at least five days a week? Like I said, we have to to exercise. The best exercise you can do is get out and get you a good moderate walk in at least five days a week, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or even an hour. Put your earbuds in and you get out there and get you a good walk in. That's right. It's just good to get out and walk and look at the beauty, the things that God has done. That's right. The things that he, he, he's done. Look at the trees. Look at the flowers. That's right. Look at the dogs. That's right. All that God has made and enjoy your walk. Also, are you drinking enough water? Are you drinking enough water? That's right. We have to learn to drink the water. I've told you guys before, I don't like drinking water, but you know what? I drink water because I know that water is essential for for my body to function. Yes, it is. You need to be drinking at least three to four bottles, 16 ounce bottles. I must put that in there. I think it's 16.9 ounce bottles of water a day, a day, seven days a week. Drink that water because you know what? If we don't drink enough water, our mouth can become dry. That's right. The, the, the saliva in your mouth, your mouth become dry. Your, you, your, you begin to, uh, yeast will begin to grow into your mouth. Uh, bacteria begin to get on your gums and your teeth and then it even causes bad breath as well so we so we need to continue to keep that water down keep that water down also lack of water can uh, impair our concentration our memory because water is good for the brain so we have to be sure that we're getting enough water so that uh, we can uh, uh, it can supply the ox oxygen and nutrients that we need to the brain don't take my word for it ask your doctor that's right ask your doctor also so we need uh, uh, water so that uh, it can help. Uh, it helps as we drink enough water. The consumption of it helps our liver and our body. I did a research on this. 
I did a research on it. So our liver can function properly uh, uh, when we have enough water in our body. Yes, it does. So we have to be sure that we're doing that. And sometimes those food cravings and them sweet cravings that we have, all you have to do is just drink you some water. That's right. And that can eliminate that. And some of us, we're exercising and exercising and we're wondering why. You know, why am I not still losing weight? Well, maybe you need to drink more water. That's right. Because you're losing weight water as you exercise. Yes, you are. So then we need to replenish the body uh, uh, back with the water. So be sure that we are drinking enough water uh, uh, in our day to day. And like I always say, eat the green food. Eat you plenty of green fruits and vegetables. I fix a very good green soup. I put broccoli in it. I put spinach in it. I put string beans over in it. I put some green peas over in it. I put some cabbage in it. That's right. I put that cream of mushroom soup. I put that white chicken breast over in it. And I tell you it is the best green soup. Yes it is. And it's good for the digestive system as well. Along with that green soup and drinking that water I'm telling you. Constipation you you wouldn't have all those hemorrhoids and all that stuff uh, uh, when you go into the restroom. And drinking that water, your urine, it will become white. It will not have odor to it. We have to do these things. Ask your doctor and use wisdom as well. And also, if you smoke, you need to quit smoking. I used to be a smoker. Yes, I did. That was well, oh, that was well over 18 years ago. If you're smoking, quit smoking and don't allow people to smoke around you because secondhand smoke is just as bad as smoking itself. You ask your doctor about this. Yes, it is. And another thing, like I always said, mind your own business. That's right. This is part of wellness. This is part of the thing that I implement when I when I do my ministry. I'm always going to be talking about prayer and wellness because God has given me those two mandates. I stay in my lane. I don't deter out of my lane. I stay in my lane. So mind your own business. Make sure you get enough sleep and enough rest. That's right. And be sure that you have a strong prayer life. Look, I hope you've called that neighbor, called that friend, called that relative. I hope you have your pen and your pad because we're going to get ready to get into our lesson on today as to what we're going to be talking about here on today. Uh, last time we were together, we were talking about when you pray. We're not talking about if you pray. We're talking about when you pray. If you are a child of God, if you are a believer, you ought to have a prayer life. A life of prayer. That ought be that's just who you that's just that ought to be that's just who you are a life of prayer you look forward to praying because we as believers this is how we communicate with God this is how Jesus communicated with God last time we were together how he would get up early in the morning that's right he it said long way before daylight he would get up and he would go and pray to the father and begin to talk to the father which is in heaven so we need to do that as well last time we was looking at that job Joshua 1 and 8, that's where we're going to pick up at, where we started up, where we left off at last time we were together. We were talking about that Joshua 1 and 8, because we need to learn how to meditate regularly. On that Joshua 1 and 8, it says here, this book of the law, talking about the Bible, shall not depart from your mouth. This need to stay in your mouth. He said, you, but you shall, we shall meditate in it day and night. The word of God we ought to be meditating in it day and night. That's right. You said, well, what about when I'm at work? What about when I'm dry? Hey, hey, even in your subconscious mind, that's what ought to be going on day and night. You can, you, I'm not talking about your conscious mind because we all have things that we do throughout the run of a day. But in your subconscious mind, you can still be meditating on it day and night. That's right. And it says here that you may observe to do according to all, not some of it. Did you hear what I said? Not some of it, but all that is written in it. For then, you hear what it said? Look at that conjunction right there. Now, when you do the first part, it says, when you do the first part, it said, for then, then you will. That's this what's going to happen after you do the first part. For then you will make your way prosperous. Everybody want a prosperous life. Yes, we do. We want a prosperous life. I'm not talking about prosperous and things. I'm talking about a prosperous prayer life. I'm 
talking about a prosperous spiritual life. That's right. I want to be able to prosper in the things of God. Not just in this worldly thing because you know what? Prosperity in the worldly thing. This stuff is decayed and stamped on it from the moment you get it. The moment you drive that new car off the parking lot. That's right. It begins to deteriorate. That's right. Stamp burn and decay is on it. But you want to prosper in the things of God and then you will have good success. Yes, you will. But you have to continue to stay in the word of God. Do what the word of God says do. And then that's what's going to take place as a child of God. I'm talking to the believer. I'm not talking to the world. The world do what the world do. This is for the believer. The word of God that I'm talking about is for the believer. You're supposed to be doing this here. Staying in the word of God. Meditating in it. Observing it. Do all that is written therein. And your life ought to be prosper. Don't you see prosperity prosperity in your spiritual life? We're not talking, like I said, about the things of the world. We're not talking about that. We're talking about in prospering and the things of God. The fruit of the Spirit ought to be showing up in your, your life. Do you have love, joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering, self-control? Do you have that, especially that self-control? Prosperity, that's what it's talking about. And then not only that... Look at Isaiah 53. We're going to look at Isaiah 53 because we're talking about, uh, 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 we're talking about when you pray. Because you know what? God has given us the tools that we need. All we got to do is take advantage of it, y'all. We have the tools we need. We have books. Go and go and invest in some books. We have TV. We have we have Facebook. We have all kind of technology. You know, we have we have uh, uh, phone lines that we can call in on. Look at that Isaiah fifty three because what we were saying before, God speak to His people. God speak to us. He spoke to us. He speak to us even through prophecy. And that Isaiah uh, fifty three. Uh, when you get time, I want you to. Read Read all of that Isaiah 53 because uh, what Isaiah did, he prophesied the coming of Jesus. That's right. And even today, we still have uh, prof prophets, prof prophets that are here that are prophesying to us. That's right. The prophets did not go off the scene uh, uh, back then. We still have some true prophets. Prophet, some true prophets that are still here prophesying the word of God. When you get time, you read all of that Isaiah 53. Like I said, he prophesied about the coming of Jesus. That's what it uh, uh, talks about. Let's look at, let's go over here and look at, uh, at Psalms 119 verses 67 through 68. That's right. Psalms 119, 67 through 68. Because God speaks to us. God will speak to us. Yes, he will. He speaks to us through different ways, like we said before. He speaks to us through dreams. He speaks to us through his word. He, he speaks to us through events. He speaks to us through other people. God speaks to us many different ways. But are we listening are we listening? Like I said before, we have to listen to God. We have to learn to listen, and we have to listen to learn. Did you understand what I just said? We have to learn to listen, and we have to listen to learn. Yes, we do. Quit talking so much and begin to listen, and we can learn something. Over there in that, I, uh, in that Psalms 119, uh, verse 67 and 68, it says here, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Did you hear what the psalmist said, it said, before I was afflicted, I went afraid. He said, but now I keep your word. That's right. Yes, I was afflicted. You was afflicted. But now guess what? I keep God's word. You are good and do good. Teach me your stature. Now I pray and I ask God. I don't know about you, but I ask God. Lord, teach me how to live this life that, that that's in this word. Take it off the pages and put it in my life. Let me walk it out. There was a dance uh, 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 a while back. There was a dance called Walk it out. We got to learn how to walk this word out. Before I was afflicted. That's right. I was astray. I did. I was out there in the world just like some of you were. I was out there in the world. But but you know what? But now I keep the word of God. I live the word of God. It's not something I talk. It's something I live. We don't talk the word of God. We live the word of God. The Bible, uh, 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 there's an old cliche and I'm sure you've heard it before. Action speaks louder than words. What are your actions saying? We're in a uh, Bible study now. We're going through a series at, at, uh, at my place of worship now. And the man of God is talking about how they see us. 
how do the world see us? Because, you know, they, 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 they try to make us look so bad as believers in Christ. You know, those that are not following, following the word of God, those that are, that are in between, they try to make us look so bad. But how do they see us? I'm talking about starting in your home. Do your husband, do your wife, do your children, do your grandchildren see that uh, Christ is in your life? Do they hear you praying? Do they see you watching Christian music? Do they see you reading the Bible? Do they see you reading uh, 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 the word of God? They, how do you live before them? So now we have to ask the Lord, teach me, teach me your statutes, teach me how to live. We have to learn how to live unto God. And then we're going to uh, 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 go over here and we're going to look at John uh, 14 and 26. Look at John 14 and 26 as well, because God speaks to us in different ways. I'm talking about when we pray, not if you pray. God will speak to us in many different ways that John 14, 26 says here. But the helper, talking about the Holy Spirit, that's right, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. But are you teachable? So you have to have a teachable spirit in order to learn something. In order for you to be taught, you have to be teachable. He said, the, uh, uh, but, the, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said unto you. But you know what? Uh, 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 the Holy Spirit can't bring nothing to your remembrance if you haven't studied nothing. Do you hear what I said? That's why I say you have to study the Word of God. If the Holy Spirit is going to bring something to your remembrance, you have to be sure and get in the Word of God. Read the Word of God. God is not asking us to remember it. He said the Holy Spirit, the helper, is the one that's going to help us remember it. So when we get up and get ready to talk, when we get ready to uh, 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 minister the Word of God, when we get ready to go in encourage somebody when we go into the hospital to see somebody or uh, 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 the Holy Spirit will bring things to our remembrance that's right but if you but if you haven't been taught and you're not putting yourself in a position to be taught to be to learn the word of God he have nothing to bring to your remembrance so we have that's why I said we have to make sure that we are allowing ourselves to be under the word of God we're not supposed to be, we as believers, I'm talking to the believer. I'm not talking to worldly people. The Bible tells us as believers, don't be conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world. He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to renew your mind. You have to wash your mind in the word of God daily. That's right. I said wash. You talking about a brain wash? That's what I'm talking about. A brain wash. Wash it out. All that stuff from when we were, from when we we were kids on up to now. If you just got saved, just watching this, just 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 watching me right now, it's gonna take a long time. Even even now, if I, as long as I've been walking with Christ, well over thirty seven years, I'm still washing out that stuff. It's like a computer. You have to wash it out with the Word of God because there's so many other voices trying to get there. But you know what? We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Helper to help us and to teach us. Yes, we do. And then not only that, we were talking about another way God speak to us is through dreams. That's right. Look at John. Uh, look at Job 33. That's what we're going to look at because we're talking about uh, uh, when we pray. You, uh, look at Job uh, 33. It says here, even through dreams, for God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it in a dream, in a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on this bed, on, on their bed. Then he opened the ear of men and, and, and seals their instruction. When we're even sleeping, that's why I say even in your subconscious mind, you know, and with your conscious mind, the word of God should be in both of them. If you're doing your day-to-day, -day, you in your meeting, or you're doing what you do on your job or whatever it is, even in your subconscious mind, the word of God is still there as well as in your conscious mind once you finish with all of that. But you know what? God will speak to us through dreams while we're slumbering and while we're sleeping. But you know what? We have to learn how to go to bed with our mind stayed on him in a dream, in a vision of the night. When deep sleep falls upon men, while you're slumbering on your bed, then God will open your ears and God will speak to you and seal those instructions to you. Yes, he will. I'm not one that do dreams, but I know of people that have dreams where God speaks to them through dreams. 
You know, that's the, that, the, that's the way God speaks to them. God speaks to us in different ways. He's God. He can do that. That's right. He knows how to get our attention. When God wants to give us instruction and, and, and direction, he has his way of doing it. But you know what? We have to stay in the word of God. We have to continue to stay in the word of God. Also, when we pray, we must be in line with what, what the word of God is saying. This is why I said we must learn to obey the word of God. Once God has given those instructions to us, we must learn to do exactly what the word of God said. If you do part of it, it's still disobedient. Look at Psalms 119 and 89. We're going to look at two more and, 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 and then that's going to be it. Uh, look at that Psalms 119, 89. And because it talks about the word of God. That's why I said we have to stay in line with the word of God. Stay in line with the word of God. You know when you done got out of line, you know. Get on back in line. Just ask God to forgive you. He'll forgive you and get back in line. It says here in that Psalms 1989, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. It's settled. It's not going to change. If you're waiting on it to change, you'll be waiting because God's word is settled in heaven. That Isaiah 40 and 8, I want us to look at that uh, Isaiah 40 and 8 as word. His word is settled in heaven. Isaiah 40 and 8 says here, The grass will of the flower faded, but the word of our God, it stands forever. God's word will stand forever. And we have to learn how to stand on the word of God. When you pray, you pray the word of God. You trust the word of God. Believe God. The Bible tells us as believers, as believers, we walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. I don't care how it looks. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all the that you and I could ever ask or think. We have to learn how to trust in the Lord. Trust in him with all of your heart. Not part of it. All of your heart. Excuse me, please. All of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Yes, he yes he will. But you're going to have to learn the word of God. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Yes, he does. You don't have to walk around with that heavy load all by yourself. The Bible said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You have to learn of him. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. But you don't know that child of God if you don't get into the word of God. Oh, I just feel, I, I, I tell you, I just feel the Holy Spirit all over me right now. I just really feel like going into a preaching mode. Yes, I do. Because I know what God can do. And I want us to continue to stay on the word of God. His word is settled in heaven. It's not going to change. No, it's not. And like Isaiah said, the grass withered and the flower faded. But the word of God is going to stand forever. We have the Holy Holy Spirit to help us. So whatever you're going through, trust in the Lord. That's all you have to do. Stand on his word. Still tell the Lord, Lord God, you said in your word that if I abide in you and your word abide in me, you said that I could ask anything that I will in your name and you said that you would do it. And if you know the word of God, you are not going to ask God for anything outside of his word. No, you're not going to do that. It's going to line up with the word of God. God's will must be done in our lives. That's right. God is with you, child of God. So I want you to continue to pray. I want you to pray. Have a prayer life. That's the way we get uh, that's the way we get in touch with God. We communicate with Him. That's right. We're communicating with Him. And the way He communicates with us is through His Word of God. Through other people. That's right. That's right. Through dreams. Through vision. Through, through, through other things. He's just that kind of God. He's an awesome and amazing Amazing God. Yes, he is. And we have to realize that that's the kind of God that we serve. He's an omnipresent God. We don't have to send him to the hospital. He's already there. We don't have to send him to the prison. He's already there. That's right. He is a omnipresent God. He's a sovereign God. He is in control of this entire universe. He's an omniscient God. He knows our thoughts. The Bible says, I know your thoughts are far off. He said, I know every word in your tongue before you ever even speak it. That 
That's the kind of God that we serve. And if you are not serving that kind of God today, I invite you to get to know the Lord. Get to know who he is. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's the only way. Because I heard Jesus say it. No man can come to the Father except by me. I heard Jesus say that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just bless your holy and divine name. Oh, how we glorify you. We magnify you, Lord God. We worship you. We praise you. We adore you, Lord God. Father God, not for what you've done, for truly you've done awesome and amazing things. But Father God, because you're God and you're God all by yourself. And we thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love and kindness. Forgive us, Lord God, for all of our sins and master that we have said, thought, and done contrary to your holy and divine will. We missed the mark, Lord God. We came short of your glory, Lord God. But you said in your word that if we confess our sins, you said that you would be faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgive us, Lord God, for the way we looked at somebody, master. Father God, for the way we turned our nose up at somebody, our actions, our attitudes, our body language, our facial expression. Forgive us, Lord God. As believers, Lord God, we have acted like this, Master. Forgive us, Lord God. Have mercy upon us. Help us, Lord God, to walk in the light as you are in the light, Master. Help us not to be conformed to this world, but help us to be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. Help us to realize, Master, that we are your workmanship. We were created to do good works, Lord God. And then, Lord God, help us and teach us, Lord God, how to go into the hedges and highways and my way and compare men and women and boys and girls to come to Christ. Father God, help, help us to let them know that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we ask him all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, be sure and join me on my phone conference Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Just come on and mute your phone and enjoy the word of God. If you want me to come to you your event. Hey, the information is on the screen. Call me, email me, and I will come to your women's conference, your women's workshop, your prayer breakfast, or your luncheon, or even your health fair, or your uh, whatever that you have. Just give me a call or shoot me an email, and I will be there. Thank you so much. God bless you.